Rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I want to welcome everyone to our regular meeting of January 20th. And uh, please note we do have two <coughs> council members absent. April. Oh, there we go. We have one council member <laughs> absent. Better. Um, let her get seated. Our first uh, item on the agenda is uh, items from council. I know I have a couple, but council, why don't y'all... What you got? Mr. Mayor, I'd uh, like to ask staff to look into providing a, a, a report or some options regarding Main Street, uh, our downtown historic area, and options that may be available to spur development. Uh, I know some, some regulations things are quite burdensome. I'll talk to uh, some in, in people that invest in buildings and people that are interested, but there's been some hurdles, and see if there's any options to not bypass safety measures, but any other options to spur development. Are, are you also looking for incentives to spur? That would not be just fantastic. the code review, but no, also No, not just for code review, but, in, but incentives as well. Okay, thank you. We'll be glad to. It might uh, benefit us all to hear a little bit about the code. I still get a little confused about, you know, historical buildings and stuff. So, yeah, that might at some point. Do uh, you have any time frame? Just no, whenever, no. Whenever, next whenever, few months? Okay. Nothing urgent or pressing, but whenever staff can get to it, we'll work on it. Fair okay. Thanks, <laughs> Jerry. Mr. Alvarez, I know you had something. A few, uh, well, just to piggyback on that, get Main Street involved, maybe they could bring forward some recommendations. And uh, also, you know, to me, it seems like the paper project is not finished. Yeah, we've, we've done an excellent job with some of the sidewalks downtown, but when you go down the cross streets, uh, there, they, those sidewalks need a little help. Hopefully we'll start looking at that in the near future. Also wanted to put a plug in for the Victoria Alliance. Many of you may have heard of it. It's a group here in the community that's uh, doing some visioning, uh, planning, not the city, but uh, their first public meeting is going to be January 24th at the Victoria College Student Center. Uh, from 10 to noon and the public's invited. I'm on, on that committee and wanted to put a plug in there if I could. Also, I'd like to ask, I, I saw where the police department announced some zone meetings. One's coming up Thursday. If the chief could give us an update on that and the, the schedule for the other meetings as well. Good evening, Mayor, members of the city council. Yes, uh, this Thursday at 6 o'clock, we were going to uh, implement our first, what we're calling, 100 zone meeting. And, and really, geographically speaking, we, we break our boundaries up into five different zones throughout the city. Uh, we're starting off with 100s, and the basic rough geographic boundaries are uh, Red River to the north, to the south city limits, west uh, city limits, to Laurent. Uh, we've kind of, it's a new expanded version of, of what 100s will look like now. We looked at the call volume and to you know even out the number of calls throughout the city we had to realign a couple of the zones so this is our way of introducing that to, to the public and to also talk about you know crime issues and neighborhood quality of life issues that are going on within the the, the different zones that we'll be having we will doing these uh, once a month beginning uh, like i said thursday and we'll go to 200 300s 400s and 500s take us the next five months uh, to finish. I don't have the exact dates. So I don't think we've ironed out the locations just about on every one of them, but, uh, but this Thursday will be our first one at Hopkins Elementary School. Uh, and we'll also uh, introduce the zone officers for the public, and then we'll be there to answer questions and, and have a uh, dialogue in terms of uh, any type of issues or quality of life issues that uh, the public would like us to be aware of that perhaps we're not aware of, and then talk about collaborating on how we problem solve. It starts at 6? Six. 6 o'clock, and we expect it to run until about 8 o'clock. Uh, obviously, everybody throughout the city is welcome to attend, but uh, like I said, we're focusing in on, on the 100 zone uh, for this particular meeting. Right. Thank you. 
before the chief walks away, I want to comment that, you know, he's been with us now a little over three and a half years, I think, August. Yes. Three and a half years. But this is one of the chief's visions when he came into the department and analyzed what the department was doing was to have more of a community presence. And you see it through our Facebook pages, the um, baseball card programs, and the involvement that the police officers are in in the community. This is just one more step of that, of trying to get out and uh, make sure the community knows the officers and the officers know the community. So <coughs> be commended for doing this. Thank you. Thank you, Very good. I hope to attend one of them at least. Look forward to seeing you. And, and we will make sure in the future that we'll get those notices out so you will know when something's in your district, you know, and the location. So Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Council? I'd like to pull D2 and D3. <clears throat> Anything else? <coughs> no, I have a couple of questions. I had a, uh, I'd like Lynn to um, give us some information. I had a question about the, on Laurent Street, the overpass, I call it by Mrs. Bears, but Mrs. Bears has no longer been there for years. Uh, there is a small section of one-way street right next to parallel Laurent. Um, a resident was asking why that was one way. Do you... Can you tell us about that? I, I can. That uh, it's actually on both sides of Laurent there, and that is uh, text dot right away. That's not. A, those aren't city streets. Those are actually state. Almost kind of you can consider them as frontage roads for for Laurent Street there or, or 185. Uh, they are one way. One of them is one way only south of Pine Street, and then the other one is one way all the way from. Uh, the crossover coming back north uh, to the intersection there. I can't. I don't. Know, I don't know if that's oak or ash, ash. but I think it's ash. One of the ash. Trees I think it's I ash think it's there. Ash. Yes. Uh, that runs right in front of Ferguson's, which is the old Baird, Miss Baird's Bakery there. But uh, one of the reasons that's one way is that the uh, the crosswalk itself that goes across, not a, not a crosswalk but a, a drive across. Uh, there are no radiuses on that. It intersects in hard 90 degree turns. And so it would be, even though it's wide enough for two cars, it would be very unsafe for cars moving in two directions to make the corner there at, at the crossover. And, and that's the reason. And to go from that street, like to go south, you'd have to do a 180, I guess, all the way. You have yeah, to well, picture, it, it, but. You, it, okay. it's, it will be hard for not to encroach on the other lane, oncoming traffic's lane, to make that corner. Okay. I'll visit with the resident about that some more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I have a question. Um, and a constituent asked me, I know we're doing the study on the quiet zone. He says that at one time he had brought it to um, another council member's attention that Sometimes, you know, the railroads, now we're having so many railroads, they park their, their um, the chemicals right there behind Mrs. Baird, so you don't normally see it, but sometimes there's chemicals sitting there for, you know, while the trains exchange. Can you just have them check to see if they're doing that? Because at one time they were doing it outside of the city limits, and now they started doing it again there. I'm, I haven't gone by to see any, I haven't seen any, but he did tell me that it's happening again, so... I don't know if that could be part of the study or if that could be something somebody could look into. The study is just on the crossing to make another quiet zone. Uh -huh. When you say chemicals, uh, can you, is it their um, tanks that There are tanks that have chemicals, have chemicals in them. They're not yes. putting chemicals on the no, side No, 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 no. But rail. he's afraid it's that, you know, in case something, cars. you know, a car could, yeah. you know, jam it, explode or whatever it would be. You know, you got the school, you got, you know, everything around there and it could be dangerous for that. You know, if somebody could look into it, that's all he was asking. Sure. Okay. I bet Chief Tanner would be involved in that discussion, so, yeah. Okay. Very good. I think that's all I had. Uh, I did have, yes, uh, <laughs> the Hot Funds uh, legislative <coughs> proposal there. I did ask for that to be put on. Uh, it's really a very simple, uh, as you may or may not be aware, the state legislation involving usage of Hot Funds. Of course, we're all very familiar with the heads and beds and all that. But uh, it's also allowable to, for a community to amend that legislation or to request the state legislature to amend it 
uh, for a specific purpose. Uh, for example, we amended it, I guess, last session to allow us to spend hot funds on existing sports facilities. And what I think would be a really good idea now uh, is to ask our legislatures to amend it so that we could use that money for any new facility in the future. Now, I have no specific facility in mind. There could be, this council could come up in something in two or four years or nothing for the next 10 years. But if we go ahead and get it amended now, uh, that way, if this council chooses to do something, we'd be able to have that discretion with that money. And it's not uncommon, actually, the, the legislation is getting very long because many cities in Texas are asking for that ability to have a little bit more flexibility with the money. So I would like to ask them to do that. I plan on asking our, our House representative and our senator to, to submit that. And typically, and from what I have observed, it's a non-issue. It's agreed to. They don't mind that amendment. So, but there's no specific plans for it. Would there be um, a response or legislation put in place by the time we have to do funds, uh, the hot funds again, or not? Well, I think so. I'm asking, I would like to ask them to do it this session, and, you know, mm -hmm. we don't even have any ideas in this budget or the next budget for any use of it yet. That's my point. There is, yeah, yeah. unless y'all were to come up with something, but I don't see us doing anything in the near, near future. But I just want that flexibility there for the city. Okay. So. Okay, very good. Thank you for that. Um, okay, if there's no further items from council, we'll move <coughs> into citizens' communication. I do, uh, anyone who wants to come up to the podium may do so now and, and state your name and address for the record. I do want to uh, point out uh, Mr. Bob Constantine was going to be here to speak to us, but he's not here tonight, so we'll just forget about that issue. So, uh, citizens' communication is now open. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bobby Lopez. I live at 2006 Southwest Bend, Jordan. Uh, you need to zip and all that. Um, I'm been putting together my dream, and it's called Daddy's Prayer. I'd like to uh, bring a special moment to kids with custom cars, motorcycles, classic trucks. I've been uh, detailing uh, custom cars for different publications over the years, uh, such as Low Rider Magazine, Hot Rod, Easy Rider Magazine, B-Twin. I'd like to bring awareness to domestic violence, and my foundation will be called Daddy's Prayer. And my inspiration uh, to get this together is my grandson, who's 22 months old, and I love watching him play with his little custom Hot Wheels and stuff like that. And I like to match a kid, uh, the children in the community, to their favorite custom car or motorcycle and treat them out for a, a day of fun or something. But the real thing, um, that's the Daddy's Prayer Foundation, and that's my dream. I've... Uh, Put together all the paperwork for the city. I got some brochures, and uh, I'll be mailing this off on February 2nd to get approval for the 501c3. And uh, this is my dream. It's called Daddy's Prayer Foundation, bringing awareness about domestic violence. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. And we did speak this afternoon, uh, and Mr. Lopez and I, and you're just getting started. It's coming out of the gate, and you have, I understand, a board that you're putting together. Yes, and, sir, my dream team. Okay. And you've also been in touch with... Uh, Midcoast and family services and others and collaboration and very sure. good. Okay. You have some information to share? Yes, sir. I brought some brochures and I got all the paperwork for the city. Okay. Um, everything's ready. I already got the phone call for the registration and trademark for Daddy's Prayer. I got the tattoo. <laughs> uh, but you're this, serious now. Yes, sir. This is from my grandson, Luke Amos Lopez. I love you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lopez, and we'll be in touch, I'm sure. Yes, sir. You'll Thank be... you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Citizens' communication still open. If anyone else wants to come up and speak about anything whatsoever. Okay. Seeing none, we'll close citizens' communication and move into our ordinances. Item C1 is an ordinance amending the 2014-2015 <coughs> City of Victoria Environmental Services Fund budget in the amount of $35,000 to provide funding for the purchase of property adjacent to the solid waste yard on Southwest Bend, Jordan, repealing all conflicting ordinances, providing for savings, and declaring an effective date. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Item C2 is an ordinance amending Schedule 6 of Section 22-11 of the Victoria City Code mm -hmm. related to traffic 
to reduce the speed limit on portions of John Stockbauer Drive for the establishment of a railroad quiet zone and to improve traffic safety through recently developed areas, repealing parts of conflicting ordinances, providing a penalty not to exceed $200, providing for enforcement, publication, and savings, and declaring an effective date. Move we adopt. Second. Okay, motion is second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. <coughs> Item C3 is an ordinance providing for the extension of certain boundary limits <coughs> of the City of Victoria, Texas and the annexation of certain territory consisting of approximately 13.53 acres of land at the request of Ball Airport Road Development, LLC, adopting a service plan for the territory to be annexed, repealing all conflicting ordinances, providing for publication and savings, <coughs> and declaring an effective date. This is a first reading, so we will need a public hearing. Let's, uh, let's open the public hearing on... C3, if anyone wants to speak to this specific item, please come forward now. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to adopt. Uh, Second. C3. Second. Any I just have discussion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, was there also a variance in here that I saw? In the resolutions, we have uh -huh. one. Oh, for this one particular? Okay. I thought there was one. Okay. No further discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Uh, on the consent agenda, why don't we just approve the minutes real quick? Sure. The D1 is the approval of minutes of the meeting on January 6th, 2015. <coughs> we adopt? Second. Motion. Second. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Thank you. Um, now D2 and D3, you want to do D2 one at a time? Yes. Um, okay, D2. Item D2 is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an employment agreement with Charmel Garrett as city manager and declaring an effective date. Okay, we need a resolution to get it on the floor for discussion. Uh, a motion, excuse me. Yeah. So the motion we adopt D2. Okay. Motion and second. Yeah. <clears throat> questions, Ms. Elise? Okay, so the contract says that now the salary is going to go to, what was it, 187000 <clears throat> Plus the $15,000 for the... Um, <clears throat> deferred. The deferred compensation. It's 181 Okay. And this starts in March? Okay. Okay, my question was really on the next one, so that's okay. what I questioned. If, if there's no further discussion on D2, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Okay. D3. D3 is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an employment agreement <coughs> with Thomas Gush as city attorney and declaring an effective date. We'll need a motion to get it on the floor. If we adopt D3. Second. Okay. Motion second. Thank you. Ms. Solis, you Okay, have a the question on that one is why 4% versus the 2%? No, I, I think the discussion was with the city council, so you would have to answer. Well, if it's a personnel matter, they have a right to go in executive session is what I'm checking on. So I'll be glad to answer, but I want to give them, give you. It's but you ask four versus two percent, which right, kind of involves both. Right. What was the logic? Even though we've that? already, yeah. Okay. If, if your question is about the whether or not we can go into executive session, and I have to be very careful here because I'm giving you advice on procedures yeah. related to the Open Meetings Act and not related to the contract, because of course the contract involves me, <clears throat> and I can't advise you on the contract itself. But so I want to make that very clear. Um, but the way the Open Meetings Act works is there is an exception that allows the governing body to go into executive session to talk about personnel matters, including this contract. Um, and typically, as the uh, city attorney, I advise that my clients do that, that they take personnel matters up in executive session in order to protect those really working relationships with those employees. Um, it is the governing board's option to go into executive session, and then the employee being discussed 
has the option to veto that and force the discussion to be held in open. What do I prefer? My preferences would be for it to be in executive session. If the board were to make that decision, I would not veto it. Okay. Because, I mean, I can give you my uh, perception. I mean, and for the record, Ms. Elise, was, you were absent in our last absent. meeting when our evaluations took place in executive session where they're supposed to, and the remaining council did what we should do. Uh, no fault that you're asking. Don't, give, don't take it that way at all. Uh, so do you guys... I want to go to executive session real quick. We can go upstairs, answer the question, and then come back and vote. That's the appropriate thing that I believe to do. Okay. We'll have to, we can't go in the back, uh, Mr. Alvarez, because that room's no longer available. We could go stand back there in the hallway if y'all want for a few minutes. I don't. Yeah, because I can't walk all the way up there and come back. Well, <laughs> we can stand the okay in the back for a few there minutes. Is a, there is a small table and standing room in, okay. that, in that I, space back there. I don't think it'll take too long. No, so. no, I just want to answer you to my question. Yes, That's well, let's, let's uh, excuse ourselves to executive session and we'll go back back there. Sure, the City Council will recess now into executive session on the 20th day of January 2015 at 5.22 p.m. Um, under the personnel exception to the Texas, gov uh, to the gov Texas government code. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council. Um, just for clarification, I want to make one statement before we, we vote, and we, I think some of Council wants to make a few other comments. Um, with, with respect to the uh, difference in compensation changes for Mr. Gush and Ms. Garrett, the 4% uh, versus 2% had absolutely nothing to do with the performance of either individual, and I think I speak for Council when I say that. Uh, we all agreed that they have performed their duties uh, admirably. Uh, we had, as a council, when we did their evaluation, some information on their peers, in other words, other city managers and other city attorneys, and how much they got paid in similar communities. And we reviewed that and felt that, uh, you know, we'd like to keep them in a proper market range. And after looking at that information, we felt we needed to, it was, it was a market adjustment is what it was. We needed to bump up the salary of the attorney by 4%, just a little bit more, rather, than the city manager to keep them both in a proper market range. Does that make sense, Council? Is that okay? And we want to make sure that was well understood. I do know that, you know, when staff makes uh, decisions about compensation to their employees, it's tied to performance, the pay for performance, et cetera. In this case, this really was not. We, we <coughs> feel that they equally have uh, done their jobs very well. So, uh, Council, you have other comments? Mr. I just had one comment. Uh, I think it's been a very good year for Thomas. Uh, I, I'm going to vote against the 4% raise, uh, mainly because I, I believe in taking a very cautious approach when it comes to the largest uh, salaries uh, of our city employees. And uh, so nothing personal. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, so we have motion second. No further discussion. All those in favor of D3 say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Nay. Okay. Whatever. So. I understand that to be a 3-2. Yeah. Is that good enough? 3-2 in favor. That's good okay. enough for me. Thank you, Council. Let's move into uh, resolutions now. All right. Item E1 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a lease agreement with the city of, excuse me, with the Victoria Livestock Show for approximately 4.9 acre tract of property near the Victoria Community Center in exchange for improvements to the pole barn and other considerations and declaring an effective date. Council? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any questions? Is there any communication or information we need to hear. I see someone approaching the dais. With <coughs> okay. Oh, you're with the community center. You're Alex. <laughs> I'm Alex, sorry. Alex, I'm sorry. Buskin, with the com he's the community center Tell director. Who, yes. Yes. Uh, and we have met. Uh, yes, you're sir. out of uniform. You usually don't wear that. I don't <laughs> I dress up a little bit today. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, uh, is it appropriate? Maybe a re quick review of what's sure. happening? Sure. You want to tell us what's going on? Or? Sure. Sure. Uh, the Livestock Show has leased that tract of property uh, since 1985. Initially, they leased it to build the pole barn. Um, the lease was renewed in 2003 uh, to 
they wanted to do some infrastructure improvements to the facility. Um, these included uh, an enclosed animal washout space, installation of rolling doors to the pole barn, as well as a concrete path between the pole barn and the JC Hall. Um, and so their lease has come up again and they would like to do further uh, infrastructure improvements to the facility. Very good, very good. And that's a $1 a year lease. And as far as the improvements we do, uh, Parks looks them over, staff just keeps an eye on what they're doing. And okay. Yes, sir. The, uh, any new improvements the uh, Parks and Rec Recreation Director would have to approve. Okay. I know it's, they are a wonderful organization and uh, do a lot for our community. So, Council, any other questions? Did we get the liability insurance policy? Have we received that document or not? I, I don't believe that we've received that document yet. We would be, we would hold off on delivering okay. the executed copy until we get Usually the Usually sometimes it's included in some of our contracts. I didn't see it. Okay. Okay. Anything further? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Right. E2. Item E2 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to purchase approximately 4.25 acres of land that is adjacent to the city property on Southwest Bend Jordan Street in the amount of $35,000 and declaring an effective date. Move we adopt E2. Second. Okay. Thank you. Motion and second. Uh, is there a discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It passes. Thank you. Item E3 is a resolution granting a variance to section 13-941C of the Victoria City Code related to municipal utilities and services, which requires the extension of a sanitary sewer main when the property is more than 75 feet from an existing sewer main to a property located at 119 County Road owned by m, &M Family Partnership LL Limited and declaring an effective date. So moved. Motion here. Second over there. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Mr. Short, did you have anything to offer? I'm just here to answer questions. Okay. The variance is only that they're going to keep their septic tank, right? Everything else, they're going to use the water for the city to build a new building and everything else? That's correct. Okay. And I saw they're going through city specs and everything? Everything else will meet code. Very good. Any further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> okay, city manager reports. Okay. Who's up first? Uh, Jerry is, and I'm sure he's waiting on me to say something. I'll get my thoughts together. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, early uh, December, we brought forth a, a report on this aquifer storage. And at the time, we, you know, said that we would need to come back in a few weeks and talk about if council's interested in us moving into yeah, phase point two. Of, point of order, we're skipping an item. Okay. We're skipping E4. Uh, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. I was saying yeah. I didn't yeah. point out the changed one, and I didn't have one <laughs> and earlier. Did I. I didn't do it. Okay, guys. All right. Thank you, you for the clarification. Let's do E4. That real quick. <laughs> I don't have a copy of it in my oh I, I do I'm sorry here it is okay. I do I'm sorry I don't have the updated agenda that includes e4 and so I skipped right over it e4 is a resolution appointing a member to the Board yeah, of Adjustment and Appeals and declaring an effective date thank you <laughs> okay what do we that's the uh, legal version what do we need to do here <laughs> what we've got is a resolution <laughs> oh, appointing uh, well, the, the resolution is currently drafted to appoint Mr. Daryl Serrano to the Board of uh, Adjustments and Appeals. As you'll remember, this is the board where we added positions from each of the four districts, and this was Ms. Solis's appointment to this position. So we have the, the name already filled in the blank. Um, unless there's discussion of that, all that we need is a motion and a second to approve and then a vote. Okay. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Is he here? By chance? I don't think Mr. so. Mr. Sronke. I was going to apologize to him. We almost missed it. So, <laughs> all right. Is there any discussion about this? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Alvarez. Okay, so Jerry can get up now. Yep. <laughs> so, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no, well, thank you. I, Please do. I, I don't have it either. Um, so the, in December, what we said we would need to do is come back and see if council wishes for us to move into phase two uh, so we can 
put that in the CIP planning process when we come back in March. And so I think Jerry's going to do just a brief um, <coughs> overview as a reminder <coughs> since it's been six weeks at least. Yes. <coughs> and that's what I'd like to do is just kind of give you a, a <coughs> high level overview of what we discussed that night, not getting into the technical aspects of it. I, we did plenty of that. Uh, the objectives of why are we looking at ASR? Well, we're looking at seasonal storage to meet peak demands as we continue to grow as a city, long-term storage for reliability during drought. And of course, we've been through drought these last several years and have seen some of the effects of that. Uh, the drought is projected to continue, but it's also looking at future droughts as we go, uh, go on into, into, into our future as a city and as a region. Uh, deferring expansion or construction of wastewater treatment plant, ASR water, aquifer storage and recovery water, water that's stored underground that has been treated to drinking water levels, is water that, that folks are using in other places now. Rather than doing concrete and steel expansion of their, of their water plant, you treat that water with your existing infrastructure, store it under the ground, sometimes even using it, treating it at night and using it that next day during your peak demand periods, especially during the summertime. And so that would defer having to expand our water treatment plant and having to do that concrete steel work at some point. And for emergency storage, um, if something were to happen to our water supply, and, and we have multiple sources of water, but always looking at that extra backup to the backup to the backup, we would have that water stored to drinking water standards uh, underground and actually would have adequate storage to uh, to get us by for quite a while if that something like that would ever happen looking at uh, disinfection byproduct reduction uh, as we as the Environmental Protection Agency and TCQ continues to tighten those standards over time uh, one of the things that we can do with this water is to mix it with uh, some of our existing water and uh, be able to mitigate some of the uh, byproducts that come with disinfection and being able to meet those standards without having to spend extra money uh, again on equipment or higher levels of technologies in order to be able to do that. The hydrogeological conclusions were that the, we have excellent data confidence in what we have. We have a lot of data on our municipal wells, data on other wells. We went to the, reached out to the Victoria County Groundwater District, which is one of our partners in this project got quite a bit of hydrological data from them and that conclusion was that this area is very well suited for ASR. This is a uh, confined sand aquifer. It's very similar to what San Antonio Water Systems is using and the Carrizo Wilcox and that, that uh, project has been very successful for some time and what they do with theirs is take water from the Edwards during those months when that water is available, uh, store it then in the Carrizo Wilcox and then bring it back. As an example, right now would be a time where we could take uh, water using our existing river water rights, treat that through our water plant, be able to be storing it for that time during the summer when we might need it or uh, whatever else that might be, whether it would be looking at water plant expansion or whatever, but being able to store that water over that period of time and having it not just saving it up for a drought someday. Uh, but also being able to use that water on a fairly regular basis, and we would want to do that. Um, the total dissolved concentrations in our area are below 1,000 milligrams per liter, which means we are below brackish water levels, and so it's uh, fairly easy to get our, our bubble put in there. Uh, we don't have any evidence of potential contamination. That's always a concern when you're taking a water source putting it somewhere where you can't see it, so to speak, but, uh, but, we, uh, but with the uh, sand aquifer that we have, we don't see that potential for that, any kind of contamination like that ha occurring. The migration rate will vary with city well operations. In other words, we can control that migration rate. Water moves, you put it underground, where does it go? In a sand confined aquifer, it moves inches per year. Uh, in the Edwards, for instance, it can move thousands of feet a day. And so a karst aquifer a lot of times is not very well suited for this, but we're not a karst, we're a sand aquifer. And so we have a very high level of confidence that if we put the water in the ground, it will indeed be there. El Paso is doing this, Kerrville, San Antonio, in Texas, but there's locations across the world and across the United States 
that have a lot. This is not new technology by any stretch of the imagination. The cost that we're looking at for the phase two testing program, which would actually be an ASR project, but we call it a testing program because when you look at the total cost of the program, we would want to phase it in so that we have a, a higher level of confidence before we make the full financial investment, uh, would be $3.6 million. The total capital cost and total project cost of a complete ASR project, which would be some years in the making, uh, would be $21.1 million. Annual cost is $1.5, including debt service and O&M. Unit cost is $56 per acre foot. That's fairly cheap water in today's market. It's very cheap water. Um, adding in the in incremental cost of treatment and storage, you're looking at still $192 per acre foot of water that's ready to be used that day. Um, and looking at one more slide, just what, what would we get for this phase two? Uh, it would be a new ASR well uh, right at our uh, Victoria surface water treatment plant. We would be retrofitting one well at plant three, well, uh, well 14 at plant three. Uh, putting in uh, a monitoring well and uh, putting a total of three monitoring wells in and then the wireline core for that. And what we're looking at is, again, we went over this in very great detail in December. Um, we're looking at uh, capital improvement plan coming up. What we would like from council uh, is, is not a commitment financially because we're not there yet, but is this the project that, that uh, having reviewed the information that you got in December and this recap today, is this something that you would like to see us go forward with? To bring back to you for consideration financially at some point. It's, it's uh, a project that takes our existing infrastructure, and that includes the investment that we've made in surface water rights, being able to leverage those surface water rights uh, so that we can get the most use out of those and actually be able to uh, perhaps uh, work with other entities in our area like the Port of Victoria. It would free up some of the rights that we have so that we could encourage economic development with, with confidence in that area and make use of some of the rights that we have that have a diversion point still at the port. Uh, Thomas has been talking with the attorney from the port about that. We've just needed some more information on where we were at. Uh, this, this helped us with some of that and gives us, uh, I think, a path forward going to the future to help stabilize, further stabilize our water availability that we have in this city as well as being able to, uh, for us to be able to reach out regionally and uh, work cooperatively with other agencies to further economic development. So you're uh, effectively asking just to put this on the list of projects. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, sir. And hopefully some budget year, I guess sooner rather than later, we, we actually do, and you're talking about phase two, just yes, sir. $3.1 million. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any harm in keeping the at all alive and putting it on the list council went on absolutely, oh, absolutely. we we've got to look to the future for our water issues and continue to make those efforts to do so in any way we can do so to sit back and do nothing would be a bad thing to do a couple of questions yes sir first phase is that when you're talking about phase two 3.6 million that thing that obviously includes for the phase one or uh, phase one well, was completed. Done phase one, right? phase one okay, was a study phase, uh, and that, that was $270,000. $135,000 of that was paid for by the Water Development Board. And they have reviewed this project and are very uh, in favor of us proceeding with this. They think it's a good project. They, th they think it's good for Texas. I'd like to proceed, but also bring us the financing options. What's the best one? You, we will do that during the capital improvements. During the CIP? We'll, do, we'll okay. put this on that five-year rolling okay. list. And so when we come back in March, yes, sir, you will see that in because that. So we'll show where um, we can fit it in with the funding. Not, be not, done just, not just our resources, uh -huh. but you've got these other markets out there, other potential grants or what have you. Uh, well, maybe not grants, but financing. It's GBRA. Right. Portland. I hope we could 
have some of those alternatives to look at a little bit more closely. Well, when we get to the finance are we going to are we going to carry this whole load, or we may have other partners? I guess. Is yeah, I, well, I hear what you're saying. Gilbert yeah, we'll, we'll have, we'll, Gilbert and I can look at that. You're talking about yes. And I, and I can okay. tell you that we will pursue grants for for these types of projects. And uh, do I know of any grant money on the table right now? No, but we will certainly, uh, as a staff, look at, at grant opportunities. Well, there may be grants, but there's some better mark. You know, just uh, beyond the public bond market scenario what's the water develop some of these water development funds that yes, those scenarios play yeah. out and, and we've, favorably we've looked at those in the past to see if it's favorable or not so we will explore all options okay good and the legislature is in session and they are in favor of anything that would help relieve some of the drought conditions in Texas wherever they exist and so uh, we don't know anything at the moment but we do know that they're favorable towards these types of things that would help alleviate drought conditions. And, Sir Mel, if I could just mention one or two additional things, uh, since Councilman Alapaska brought it up. Uh, Representative Larson, uh, there's a group of us with TWCA that, that got together and have been working over a year now on some legislation to uh, answer some questions about ASR. Uh, Representative Larson introduced that legislation that we gave him last week and that does clarify some of the uh, permitting questions and that type of thing. And, and these types of things, when they, when they look at the Water Development Board's funding and what they might have for grants to encourage these projects, uh, that's certainly going to be helpful for that. And so, again, we don't know what the what, what Water Development Board budget is going to look like at this point, but, uh, but there are folks at uh, House and Senate Natural Resources that are in favor of what the state can do to encourage this. So. Very good. I have a question. Uh, yes, ma'am. When you did the presentation last time, you said one of these, what do you call them, ACRs or ARSs? ASR. 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 They were to help with, in case of a drought, and it would go like for a 10-year period. Was that what I remember? Or for a certain amount of time? Yes, ma'am. Um, it... When you look at a drought of records, you're usually looking at about a seven-year period, uh, and, and we're about in the middle of one of those right now. Uh, and so if we were to implement the ASR project today, would it be something that would get us through the rest of this drought? It would help, but we wouldn't have enough storage in place, and that's one of the reasons that you do this. Uh, droughts come in cycles. We will see another drought. Uh, climatologically, they're, they're predicting that we'll probably see them more often than we have. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does take time to get all this implemented. But yes, this is something that, in conjunction with our other water resources, we wouldn't live off of ASR for seven years. But during those summer periods, then yes, it would be something that would get us through that once we got the storage in place. Okay, so that leads me to the next question. If we're in the middle of a, of a drought right now and they come in cycles, do you suggest that we get prepared for the next cycle? Uh, because, it, like you say, it's a little too late right now. But how much time are we talking about? Do we have enough time to be able to come up with the funding for it and the, get to the different phases? Yes and no. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's almost, well, it is like predicting the weather because basically that's what you're doing. Um, one of the things that we want to accomplish with this ASR project is, uh, is getting that confidence, getting it in place and, and seeing how it works, which will help us with designing the second phase of it. Uh, and so in that way, the sooner the better. But is it something that... Uh, in balancing that with other capital improvement needs that we have, is it something that has to be done today? No, it doesn't. And so, and, and that's something that when, when Lynn comes back to you with the capital improvements program, is looking at how all those things fit in there. Um, you know, as a water planner, I want to do it today. But there are many, many needs that we have. And, and this is something that will help us going completely into the future, really. This isn't a project that you do and then it goes away in 10 years. And we're, we're in it and it's going to be helpful, but it will take time for them to implement. And say we get through the drought in the next year or two, is it something that, eh, we don't need to worry about that? No. 
because it's something that is going to recur and also looking at other needs uh, water treatment plant expansion and those types of things it's it's not just a drought solution there's at a, all there's a big economic development component to it yes. going forward in the future the cost of water is more of a factor in some industries uh, locating here cheap water is a draw so absolutely yes. it's a lot of good reasons it's just choices this council has to make when we get to the CIP Okay. Staff recommends we move forward with a phase two when we can um, afford it and put it in the CIP. So that's why you will see it. It'll okay. be on that five year roll. Okay. And as usual, it always is competing with other things we need to yes. get done. <laughs> but I, I feel like this is kind of one of those base needs that we really need to be addressing, mm -hmm. or else we have to get a big wad of money at some point to address it all at once. It's always very hurtful. But we can address it going forward. And, and get this to work and it would be a very good thing to have. Mm -hmm. It would help us protect our reliability of our water supply. We want a real high 90% level on our water supply. We've got a three-legged school on it now and that we've got, we can go to the wells, we can go to the reservoir. It'd be nice to have four-legged school. The good part about an ASR also is you have almost no loss from evaporation and a regular above ground storage thing like a dam or an earthen dam or something like that is you can have 80 to 90 percent evaporation of your water mm -hmm. yet you still pay for the water to get it in there so yeah. it's not necessarily it's got a lot of positives about it there's also nothing is perfect but it'd be a good project to go for and I, and I hope council will do so okay no thank further you. comments thank you thank you Jim. So, uh, yes, it came up last time, and so Colby's going to do a parks update on projects that are going on. It just, uh, and we cannot open public comment back at this time. Sorry. You talk to me after the meeting. Mayor, Council Members, thank you. Uh, this is a quick reference guide on, on some of the projects that's going on in the Parks uh, Department. Um, Mayor asked about Grover's Bend and a couple others, and so I was going to update the, the four major projects that we have going on at this time. Uh, the Grover's Bend parking lot, uh, that is in construction phase right now. Uh, we are clearing out uh, a lot of the underbrush and, and things of that nature. We have leveled off the, uh, the parking area and are putting granite gravel on. Uh, right now we're waiting on our, our second load of granite gravel to come. Uh, we are going to be able to, uh, in addition to this project, to be able to build a, a walking trail through uh, Grover's Bend, a granite gravel walking trail that will connect to our current uh, sidewalk. It'll be about a quarter, uh, three quarters of a mile uh, trail around, and so it'll connect from sidewalk to sidewalk around uh, that facility. Wonderful. And so uh, that's included in this project. We're hoping to be done. We'll be done with the parking lot and the others. Hoping to, uh, around spring break time is, is when that'll be done. The parking lot will be done and will be open. We may still be working on the walking trail, but we will have the parking lot open by uh, spring break. That's if weather our, our beach down there. Yes. So, yes. for reference to those who know what we're talking about, where the where the goats cleared it out. I was going to say the goats are gone. And it's a yeah, the, goat, the goats popular. aren't there right now. They're they're over by the pump house. So <laughs> that is good. wonderful news. I, I didn't know. I didn't realize you're doing that trail. So yes. wonderful. Um, the splash pad. Uh, the splash pad is in the design phase right now. We just met with the landscape architect on that. Uh, he's coming back with a different design and and uh, uh, firming up that cost estimate for us. I hope to bring that back to council to to approve at the uh, second meeting in February. I think is the target date that we're shooting for uh, What's to get the location? that design. Sir, excuse me. What's the location? Uh, the location will be if uh, for a reference when you're when you're driving into the community center park going down to the pool. There's that little circle drive right there. Uh, it'll be at that circle drive back towards the pool okay. uh, and then we will demo the pool in, in a future budget uh, uh. Okay. Uh, the kayak rental uh, we are uh, working with the um, uh, the vendor as far as getting that building up and running getting the the all the different items in there uh, from our side that we can help him with. He has expressed his his desire to have a, a grand opening April the 1st. That is his date. That's not something we've put on to, on him. I know that's when the contract, when he starts paying us, but he can open at any time. But that's his date that he's looking at is April the 1st. Um, on that. That'll be right next to the zoo. In that yes. con we, I call it a concession building. Yes. And those of us who've lived here many, many years, 
I don't know if y'all have ever seen it open. I, I don't recall it ever being used in my lifetime. Maybe many, well, when I was real little. So I'm very pleased to see this usage. And it's good. What are you grinning about over there? <laughs> you remember it I'm being used. I'm old enough to remember when Noah built the ark. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, the last project is the Riverside Pavilion. Uh, right now, if, you, if council remembers, we went to a, a contract that was uh, for the architect to have a conceptual drawing and then go into, if, if approved by council, go into a um, construction documents. Uh, the, we've met with uh, Raleigh and McCoy. Uh, they are looking at having budget numbers to us by the end of, of January and hopefully back in that second uh, meeting in February we'll have something for you to decide whether or not we want to move forward with the, uh, the uh, construction drawings. Was it the area where the train used to go around? Is that the... I'm not sure where the train the went The pavilion? Around. That's where the concession stand is. Where the yes, concession stand is. across from the train station. The old Riverside Center. The, what we're calling Riverside oh, okay. Pavilion. Okay, yeah. okay, I understand Convention. now. Okay. Convention, Convention Center. Center. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We, we're just calling it Riverside Pavilion. Okay. I, I thought you were talking about the kayak. That, that is by where the tracks yes. were. There's still okay. some tracks there, but mm -hmm. anyway. No. That's all the projects I have to update you on. I think last time Tom had a question about your new piece of equipment. Oh, we did get in a forestry machine. I haven't been able to drive it as much as I want to. I'm trying to get out of the office to do to drive this piece of equipment. But it, it attaches onto our Bobcat. Um, and, and this thing, if, if you haven't visited Grover's Bend uh, in a while, please come to my office and I'll take you down there. Or if you if you go on a weekend, there is a, a dramatic difference in just the, the, the week and a half, two weeks that we've had this machine. Um, it, will, it will clear you know, a, a, a tree that's six inches wide in a matter of five seconds and go down to just, you know, a mulch. Um, and it, it's really been uh, something that's been a great tool for us to use, and, and we're really excited about it. It is, it is a, a neat machine. The goats are really good clearing the undergrowth uh, out, but they, they're not eating the yeah, small they, trees they, they or anything. Yeah, they can't get the small tree willow yep. trees so or we have the thorns and things of that nature, trees. but it's, it's amazing how it is. So. Are we saving the mulch for the rose garden? Uh, it doesn't get quite that fine, but uh, we do mulch when we use our own mulch and a lot of that stuff, so yes. Oh, okay. yeah. Very good. Well, thank you. I think Riverside Park is going to be very exciting this year. Yeah. Uh, and I hope if any parks commissioners are watching, you know, I do thank them for what they do to come together and kind of talk about some of these projects. So. Thank you. Jerry has the last city manager report to talk about priorities for CDBG. Good evening. All right. Uh, tonight we wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, the new consolidated plan we'll be working on uh, this spring. Staff will and uh, kind of get a little bit of direction from council on what y'all see um, uh, any changing in priorities uh, before we get too far into that plan. So, um, just real quickly, while we're doing this because HUD requires us to. We've talked about this a little bit before. Um, he who has the money makes the rules. So HUD is making us, we get the money from HUD and HUD requires us to do a five-year plan. Uh, and that five-year plan establishes what our, our vision and priorities are going to be over the next five years. Um, so um, there is, as with all of our plans, there is a community or citizen participation element. So over the next uh, several weeks and, and coming months, we'll be reaching out uh, to our partners and other social service agencies uh, and, of course, the public at large to get their input on what uh, the plan's priorities uh, for that, those federal dollars spending should be. Uh, just real quickly, some of the basics. Um, as you know, this is our the city's primary source for addressing uh, community development needs and our low in, for our low income uh, families and our low income neighborhoods. Uh, because the city's over 50,000 population, we get this uh, money annually. Uh, currently, uh, the city's received this current fiscal year in our grant allocation was a little over $561,000. Of course, there are those national priorities uh, that it's got to principally benefit low to moderate income people, uh, aid in the elimination of slum and bright blight, and address activities um, uh, that are an urgent threat to health or safety. Um, of course, the money uh, has to benefit families uh, that are below 80% of median income, 
You can see those income limits um, on there for a family of four. Um, under 43350 would be the, the maximum that someone can make and receive benefit from the funds. Uh, as you can see on the map there, um, those are the neighborhoods that would be eligible for the funds. Uh, and those are determined where uh, at least 51% of the residents are low to moderate income. Um, HUD has changed how they do that, if detail in here, uh, the, starting with the 2010 census, census no longer collected income information. Uh, it's now collected through a different method through the census where they are collecting it annually through what they call the American Community Survey. And for Victoria's population, that's a five-year rolling average. So what the simplest terms means that these um, yellow highlighted areas potentially can change every year. Uh, staff has been used to, after the census comes out, going, okay, there's our map for the next 10 years. Uh, that's no longer the case. So, um, and the staff was a little surprised. There's that very top northernmost um, yellow highlighted area uh, is bounded by Navarro, Salem, and John Stockbauer. That's uh, Castle Hills West. Uh, and there are a number of apartment complexes in there that I, I guess are contributing to that uh, area income. We're not used to seeing our ability to go that far north. Um, but anyway, as I said, those, will, those are subject to change annually. So it'll make a little bit of a challenge as we um, try to address things like um, parks and sidewalks and whatnot. But um, just to give you a real quick, run, quick rundown of funding history, the city started receiving fund, CDBG funds in 1982. Um, Obviously, the majority of that was spent on large infrastructure projects uh, up until 1991. Um, and then in 1992, um, there was a little bit of diversification in the spending. Still large infrastructure projects were being done. Um, during this time, the city's allocation was close to a million dollars a year, which uh, let us uh, work with Public Works to do you know, some large street uh, improvement projects and, and some utility projects. Started getting into the, some housing activities uh, during this time period. Um, and then when we got to 2001, which is again a change in, the, in a new uh, consolidated plan, uh, our allocation, start, we started to see then allocation going down uh, considerably. Uh, and there was a shift, because of that, there was a shift away from large infrastructure projects towards uh, a significant uh, amount of money going into housing rehabilitation and uh, down payment assistance programs. Uh, you can see on there. And then the last time we did the consolidated plan, which was five years ago, uh, there was a shift uh, away from housing uh, to uh, focus on some public service and public facility uh, needs. Uh, the maximum we're allowed to fund public services is at 15%. So uh, the city's been maxing that out. And uh, y'all are well aware of the, la of the larger, I assume you're well aware of the larger public facility projects we've done with uh, partnerships with Midcoast Family Services and their uh, Women's Crisis Center. Uh, we've done a l several large uh, allocations with Boys and Girls Club that, um, to upgrade their facility. And of course, we're currently in the last phase of the Gulf Bend um, facility as well. So these are the eligible activities that we've currently been um, providing some level of funding for public facilities, down payment assistance. Um, this current year, we're not really doing much with uh, neighborhood cleanup or beautification. Um, as I said, we're still funding public services, uh, this year we're uh, funding a portion of the uh, splash pad that Colby just spoke about. And we've done some uh, infrastructure, smaller infrastructure projects like filling in sidewalk gaps, transit cell shelters, uh, that sort of thing. Some street lighting in some of the neighborhoods. So um, just real quickly, staff recommendations uh, are just that. We would certainly uh, like to see uh, council continue to fund the public service agencies up to that maximum. Uh, and then continue funding at least until we finish one crossing uh, that program. Uh, we currently fund um, the equivalent of, of one salary for a cut enforcement officer. We actually fund two halves 
uh, it gives us some flexibility there. Um, and then we like to continue um, working on uh, doing park upgrades in the eligible areas. So with that, uh, here are my questions for you. <laughs> um, are there some specific changes you'd like to see? What are your thoughts? Are there some specific ideas or projects that council would like to see uh, implemented in the next five years? Do you have any more parks that you're going to be working on since we've got a couple of them done last year? Um, I don't have a specific park in mind. There's a number of um, <coughs> parks that are eligible um, mm -hmm. and I probably have to defer to Colby to see what might be next we're doing this, as I said we're doing a splash pad this year we did um, two phases of uh, playground equipment in Hopkins Park um, over the, the previous two years and uh, I believe we did upgrades in Meadow Lane right. uh, before that and uh, I don't know if you've got Something that what our plans are now is, is to go back to those parks and, and we've, we've really been able to focus on the playground structures is, is to, to go back to those parks and start looking out is to widen that range as far as sidewalks around it, different things to that nature inside each one of those parks that are eligible. And so yes, we are continually going to use this as much as we can. Okay. What's the last of that uh, 15 to 20 years. Did we get lighting on Meadow Lane after all? Remember we talked about it? I, I remember we talked about it. I thought we did it, but I, I really will honestly have to speak with Darla to see if okay. I, I know that was talked about and I thought <clears> yeah, they were going to put a to the light back, on that back hole. Something about the back and needed lighting down there. And I, I can check on that. Or, uh, I thought they did do the lighting. I thought we did. If, you, if you're, if, well, I thought if you're aware that it's not working, let me know. Okay, uh, I'll, let you we'll know. I'll let you Get that addressed. Oh, I have a question now that we're talking about lighting. If we're riding around, I mean, I'm coming out of my office and the light is on, and it's broad daylight, and at night it's not on, so it's weird. Street light. The street light. AEP. AEP, just give you the street number. Well, I mean, pay the, that bill, so. Yeah, no. Yeah. If you can just let just us know get you the number. The street number or the, or the location. Okay. I will. They have a sensor on them. It's probably out. There's a sensor on top. Uh -huh. Some of my staff probably knows, and it's supposed to be off during daylight. Okay. Needs to be replaced. They also have a very uh, friendly web based okay. AP that you can go out and, and they say that they'll repair it within three days. Okay. Uh, There's a it just four digit num poll number that's right, on right. there. If you have that poll number, you can go straight to AEPtexas.com, okay. I think it is. I think, I Put think one of the numbers might be pulled off because the next poll has got three numbers, but this one only has two. So I thought, okay, if I give them just a two digit number, will they be able to find it? You give them, give them, give them the, the give them the location. address, location, location, location with those two numbers on. Yeah, okay. they'll, they'll come out during the day and they'll see it's on. They'll know okay. which one. Okay. And in a case like that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Mr. Mr. Mayfield, uh, yes, sir. The um, in regards to the Children's Discovery Museum, I, uh, based upon that map, do, do they fit into the new um, economic? We've, we've looked specifically um, before as they were working through that. Um, just because it's in the area doesn't necessarily mean that it's an eligible activity. And if I remember right, we uh, have discussed that specific project with HUD. And since it doesn't principally, primarily benefit low-income no, children, I, don't, I think we were very limited, if at all, of what we could fund on them. I think we were asked that question sometime within the last year. What do you mean? They gave scholarships or gave certain things? There may be a programming activity that we could do okay. with them, but I don't think Anything service, on the facility, but on the service side, possibly on the service side. Okay. Yeah, probably the best thing is would to have Miss Dixon come sure. visit, set up an appointment and visit with Darla. Yes, and there'll be a Darla will schedule. I've asked them to do that. Sure, no, I would just sure, absolutely. Sure, Darla will have a a, a public uh, outreach with all the public service providers, so anyone and all can come to that meeting. It's not. I don't think we've got that nailed down yet, but it'll be sometime in April usually. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate what we're doing here with this funding and what we've been doing. A couple of standouts for me, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, the Food Bank have been, ex you know, we really appreciate that. The only thing I'd like to add to the mix for more, for more discussion, if, if feasible, is additional uh, sidewalks. You know, Mary, that's something you've, you've emphasized. <clears throat> uh, and more, more uh, the covers and the benches for transit. For transit. Okay. And of course, they have to be within the eligible 
areas I understand now that those are moving around uh, that might this might give us an opportunity to uh, go but we've added a new a route and there's probably a lot of other oh, yeah. openings opportunities there to put more covers we need to come up with a new list and see mm -hmm. if they fall within the target area but uh, mr. Alvarez I can tell you that uh, we're internally working on kind of a master plan for sidewalks uh, so to determine where there's it's already developed and we've got gaps so we can start looking at what's out there and then try to start funding some of those uh, gaps so um, for well, the I know we have we certainly have challenges in that area absolutely we do frustrating a lot of some of the the pedestrian vehicle accidents I would hope we could for safety purposes alone begin to maybe Chip away at that. I don't know if this sure. funding source is, is it, but mm -hmm. this can, this can before, certainly so help you with that. <clears throat> and then if in, in planning, as staff knows, there's going to be we need to set aside whatever it would be. I'll just make up a number: a hundred thousand dollars for that. Then we know that going in when we're meeting with some of these nonprofits, it, hey, there's this is what's going to be left after we've done yes. parks and sidewalks or whatever it would be. Just as a point, was there any of the uh, pedestrian accidents that occurred were any of them due to the lack of sidewalks well I don't know that you know when you cross the street of course you're crossing the street perhaps but, a misuse uh, thereof sure. but uh, regardless there's still a lack of sidewalks for our pedestrians throughout the community I mean yes there is a lack we do need to address that yeah, we, I didn't know if any of the accidents might have been related yeah, to I don't lack know. of sidewalks we're not terribly pedestrian friendly, but we're all working that direction. I think everyone here would agree on that. I bet we could probably, with about a hundred million dollars, finish all. They're, they're just so expensive; it just blows me away. You know, for years we we would carve out fifty thousand dollars to go out and do some spots, and then we would y'all. Some of y'all were here. We you know, okay, let's do this little gap and this little gap. And it adds up over years. I encourage. You. I don't think we're doing that in this current budget. Well, I, you know, if you ask me to, to say, well, which ones do you want? Well, I start with the schools first. Yeah, right. You know, right what's right. feasible, and, and then work from there. And that's why I feel like we need that master plan with a, yes. a, a design that shows us where we're at, so we budget and move forward. I would mo yeah model it after your street plan. You know, where you grade the streets, you locate all inventory of the whole city. Where's the highest priority, and make some objective or subjective observations about. Foot traffic. You, know, you see, we see all driving down the road and see those little trails in the field. Obviously, there's a lot of foot traffic there, so try to give it some weight to it. Anyway. Well, and then it's okay. the, for lots that aren't developed, you know, as that development occurs, it's that owner's responsibility to mm -hmm. build the sidewalk connect. We're focusing on developed area right. and going back and filling in those gaps. Mm -hmm. Is that that paseo plan? Uh, no, that sir. Different? That's more of a trail. That's the trail plan. We will plan. bring that back. On, I think we've got it on the third, okay. February okay. the third to, uh, to do a okay. uh, review of that. It is a connectivity issue, when, you know, with trails and trying to get right. people to the park. Right. Okay. Okay. So I guess it could be sidewalks. <laughs> Multi-use paths. Pedestrian. Yeah. Yeah. There you pedestrian go. traffic. Non-vehicle traffic. Okay. Uh, okay. Council so. If I'm understanding right, we're kind of generally okay with. The I believe same we've been making some good progress as well. Direction. Very good. Let's don't change the boat too much. Okay. Trim the sails a little if you need to. Okay. That helps tremendously. Thank you so much. <coughs> here. Actually, maybe here. Let me let's have that discussion. Okay, that, that concludes your city manager report. Yes. We do have one item for executive session. I don't I don't want to make ask Miss Elise to walk upstairs next door. Uh, it's a very brief executive session. I believe so. We could excuse everyone and just do it right here. All right, just go in the room for a few minutes. There will be no uh, no discussion afterwards. Nothing to convey. Um, do y'all want to go next door or? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Well, we're trying to okay, but, but you. we don't have any announcement afterward. He was welcome to stay, but we'll be out in a minute. Go ahead. All this right, the City Council will recess for executive yeah. session on the 20th day of January 2015 at 6.20 p.m. The subject matter of the executive session deliberation is as follows. Texas Government Code Section 551.072 to deliberate the purchase exchange lease or value of real property interests due to the fact that the deliberation in an open session would have a detrimental effect on the position of the city in negotiations with the third party. Thank you. Thank you.